Did Ukraine really just try to assassinate Vladimir Putin? Let's talk about that on the Hot Zone. Hey folks, Chuck Holton here. Thanks for watching the Hot Zone. And I've been, I'm back in my place in West Virginia for a few days. I've uh, been super busy getting prepared for the release of my new documentary about Armenia. And I will put the link in the description here if you want to find out more about that documentary. Uh, I'm very excited about it. It's already run, won a couple of awards and we're going to do a world premiere in Yerevan next month. And so we're busily preparing for all that that entails. And uh, in the so I haven't, uh, I've got a whole lot of other videos that I'm supposed to be uh, getting out to clients right now. So I've, I've not had a chance to put up too much on the hot zone. But if you are following, if you're not following on YouTube, you should be because uh, we are putting up shorts every day and some content there that isn't going elsewhere. So check that out. Now, uh, about 70% of the people who watch the show are not subscribed on YouTube. And that's a shame because we could get a lot more reach if people would just hit that subscribe button. So do me a favor and subscribe if you've been watching the, the content for any amount of time. Now, uh, let's talk about what just happened in the Kremlin in Russia. Uh, a couple days ago on Tuesday, a apparently, reportedly, a couple of drones flew in and detonated right over the Kremlin. One of them appears to have hit the flagpole. There's this short 15 second segment or so of this, what appears to be a drone flying in and uh, making some fireworks over the Kremlin. Now, there wasn't any damage to speak of. Nobody was hurt. Uh, Vladimir Putin was not in the Kremlin at the time, and so he wasn't in any danger. But the Russians are freaking out over this, making this into a real big deal and saying that uh, Ukraine tried to assassinate their president. Well, I don't know what they're complaining about. Russia has tried to uh, assassinate Vladimir Zelensky at least four times during this conflict and has failed every time, of course. But uh, so it's tit for tat if you want to look at it that way. But we're not sure if this is actually Russia uh, making some sort of provocation because they're very good at that. They're known for doing things like this. This is not even a maybe at this point. Russia very, very, very often creates crises like this. They blow things up in their own country, in the Donetsk province, in order to shape the information battle space. Russia is very concerned about the information war, and they're doing a, probably the best job of it, any other part of this conflict in the information battle space. So it is certainly possible that Russia created this crisis, uh, created this event in order to uh, have a justification, they believe, in the eyes of the world to strike back even harder at Ukraine. I don't think they have much left to strike back at Ukraine. I mean, they've, they've, they just went like two months without any missiles falling on Ukraine to speak of uh, until just a couple days ago, because uh, really they are about out of missiles. And we've been saying that for a long time and they, they're not making them fast enough to prosecute this war the way they'd like. And this thing has not gone the way they wanted it to go. And uh, there is now news out, we just saw this morning, that I think that the Dutch have uh, the have some photographs, they say, of a Russian ship in the area of the Nord Stream pipeline right before it was blown up. And that ship is able to carry a submersible uh, that could have done the job. Now, there's a lot of disagreement about who blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. Uh, I mean, Biden said he was going to do it, so there's that. Uh, and, and so, you know, that certainly gives some credence to the theory that the United States did it, but I don't think you can completely discount the idea that Russia did it either. Uh, because again, Russia is very, very good at creating these provocations and, uh, you know, in order to sort of try to gain points in the eyes of the world. Uh, and that thing was pretty well shut off anyway. So anyway. It's, it's certainly not out of the realm of possibility that Russia did it. So could they have done this provocation? Could they have, have done this explosion over the Kremlin? Sure, they could have. Uh, 
did they? Well, the one thing that makes me think that they didn't is the fact that the Ukrainians, uh, so a Ukrainian businessman recently uh, put out the word that he was willing to pay $500,000 to anybody who could create a drone that could fly to Moscow and land on Red Square in the middle of the May Day Parade with on the wings of the drone, it had to say, Slava Ukraine, Eroim Slava. Um, so, you know, a half million dollar reward for sending a couple of drones to Moscow is a pretty big incentive. And the Ukrainians have been making good use of drones starting from the very beginning in this war. Most of the time, they, they started with Chinese drones, DJI drones that are off the shelf, and then they'd modify them with 3D printed parts and things like that to carry grenades and, and that sort of thing. And then they started building their own drones. And I've had some sort of inside information talking to some of the guys who are involved in the tech for the Ukrainian drone program, and they are building more and more capable drones all the time. So it is possible that they built drones that could make it all the way to Moscow, evade all the air defenses, and blow up right over the Kremlin. That is the reason why the Kremlin is really freaking out about this, not because they believe it was an assassination attempt, because it is showing the Russian people that Russia, especially the Russian government, is uh, vulnerable to attack. The, you don't think for a minute the Russian people aren't seeing this and saying, wait a minute, we've got all these air defenses all around Moscow, and yet two drones made it literally to the flagpole in the center of Moscow, of the Kremlin, and detonated. It doesn't matter that they didn't blow up anything of substance. The mere fact that they made it that far shows Russia's weakness, and it shows that to the Russian people in a way that they haven't been shown that weakness to, to date, and that's why Russia's trying to spin it as an assassination attempt. Uh, so bottom line is, it's not a good look for Russia, even if nothing was damaged. And uh, the fact that Russia is claiming that they're going to retaliate, some are even calling for nuclear war. Uh, Russia, again, I have said this over and over and over again, I don't believe Russia is stupid enough to try to use nuclear anything because they know that it would change the game and it would bring NATO to bear directly against their country. And uh, if they're having a hard time taking one little town of Bakhmut for six months in the Donetsk province with all of the forces, 97% of their forces committed at this point, you can imagine how quickly they would crumble under 60% of the world's military power, uh, that being NATO, coming against them directly. Um, the, the idea that Russia is going to detonate a nuclear bomb. The only way that's going to happen is if Russia itself is being invaded. And nobody's going to invade Russia. Nobody wants to take Russian territory. Russia can have all its territory. It can do what it wants in its territory. It just needs to leave its neighbors alone. That's all I got for today. Thanks for watching.